I'm Yvonne Brignola. I uh, am a longtime wife of Nick Brignola. He was born in Troy, played clarinet, traded his instrument in for a baritone saxophone and fell in love with it right away. And that became his major instrument. The baritone allows you to shout and yell, and I think it fit his personality. Jazz gives you an opportunity to take a basic phrase and then improvise on it. I think that's what attracted him to jazz. and he was trying to get his career going. He also played weddings or bar mitzvahs. Later in his career, played in places like Carnegie Hall. He would give 100% when he played, say, a wedding, in the same way that he would have played the Smithsonian or Carnegie Hall. <laughs> He was totally involved in his music. There have been times that we were dressed to go out for the evening, and he'd get a call that someone needed a, a substitute, and of course he went. I mean, that was just a given in, in our marriage that the music came first. He was a very good father. Our children adored him, and when he was here, he was 100% involved in their lives, but he was very serious about his music. There is a saying, you're never famous in your own hometown, and for a long time I think that was true here. He got, towards the end of his life, a lot more recognition. The uh, Italian uh, community in South Troy, where he grew up, honored him, and they have put a plaque up on the house where he grew up. He was well aware of his own ability. He certainly knew that he played well enough that he could play with anyone. The improvisation was really remarkable to me because I had been classically trained and I was trying to play what was on the page. The kind of improvisation that he could do was just truly amazing to me. Being a jazz fan, you could not know about Nick. He was our, our international player, you know, an amazing player who happened to live here, which was a gift for all of us. He was the funniest person. I think you were hanging out with a great stand-up comedian. He could tell a story about anything, and that was that's the same as with his playing. His playing was full of logic. All his stuff made sense. Everything he played made sense. He played every night like it was his last night. He never phoned it in. He always was burning. My relationship to Nick Brignola was one that spent over 25 years as his drummer. Nick Brignola was my musical mentor and my best friend. And, and I think he probably had a greater influence on my life than anyone else, um, maybe even including my own father. Nick was very particular and very sensitive to people in the audience disregarding the music and talking and things. One night in particular, we were playing a club and a group of people came into a table and they were having a great time, but they were talking and yelling and, you know, totally disregarding us playing. And I could sense that it was annoying Nick. We're playing a song right in the middle of a tune. He left the bandstand. Now he's still soloing because he used to use a wireless microphone. So he's still blowing a solo and he went right over to these people's table and stood on top of them 
and blew the rest of his solo. I don't know how many choruses he took. And he ended his solo and he turned around and walked back to the bandstand. And all of a sudden, that table of people erupted in applause and cheering. And they stood up and they're clapping and applauding him. I was proud of him. Proud of him when he was unknown as much as when he then was successful and had been nominated for a Grammy. 